Okay, I think we're going going out on uh, Facebook and we're recording and we're ready to go. Wait a minute, let me do something here. Hold on, got to get my cap. Uh, I saw my head don't shine as much as it should. Okay, all righty, here we go. We're ready to go. We also have some people ready to go as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, admit all. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Joining, 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 joining. Oh, look, we got Mandy and we got Shecky and we got Jeff and we got Andrew and we got Steve Bender. Hello to all of you. How are you today? Good. I Good. tried Hello. to use my camera on my computer and I don't think I have a microphone on my computer, so I had to go back to my phone. Well, no, no, actually, we you do have a microphone on your computer. I yeah. do? Yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't hear myself, so I got uh, out of it. <laughs> can you hear everybody else? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm saying I had to I had to get off of my computer and come on back onto my phone. Oh, oh, you're on your it, phone. Because the microphone wasn't working. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I have to get that on set up. All right. Okay. Hey, Alex, I got, I got some news. They finished the recount in Arizona, and I got my new office. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank goodness for those cyber congratulations on my friends. It's very nice. It's a very nice office. There. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're now officially the governor of. Uh, of uh, no, this is or, my this is the White House. Well, the White they, House. they took away my Diet Coke button, though. Oh, I see. Did he, <laughs> did he have a Diet Coke button? Yeah, yeah. He did? Yeah, you got to push it and get Coke. Yeah. All they give all they give me is this tap water. They say it comes from Flint, it Michigan. It's diet delicious. Did it say Diet Coke on it? <laughs> I don't know, but this Flint water is delicious. Uh, it's yeah. got a nice... Don't you think all presidents kind of have like a, a list of demands that they, you know, kind of like celebrities in their green room? They would probably have little, little <laughs> things they ask for, you know. They, they uh, get writers in their contracts, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Writers, that was it. There we go, Mark. You were siding. I wanted green M&Ms. They told me that was no. Couldn't have them. Oh, really? Yeah, no green M and M's in the White House. No, I would. No, uh, who, I'll stay in the resolute desk here. But who is who is it that uh, that uh, went? Uh, I got to go back here and look and make sure everything's going out okay. Who was the one who uh, who who had to get their green M and M's separated? Van Halen. Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. I never could figure out why. Well, there, there used to be a joke back in the '80s that green M and M's make you horny. No, the, the Van Halen. Did you um, missed that joke out. <laughs> Miss that about the <laughs> Van Halen demanded it simply because they could. They said, you know, they were told they could make these demands, so they did it to have someone picking out the M and M's. So it was in their contract. Yeah, it was in their writer to their yeah. contract. And they said they can you can get anything you want, so they did that. Yes. Yeah, Mike Chisholm, Mike. So this might have already been said. If it, it, so, I for, forgive me. I heard that bands did that. So they would make sure that the promoter would pay attention to what it was that they were looking for, like to make sure that they've read it. Yeah, just an article. I heard they made demands that. like that for that. Well, B Billy Squire, when it would tour, and if you misspelled his name on the marquee, there was like a ten thousand dollar fine. And he he claimed that over the years he earned a hundred and something thousand dollars because they always misspelled Squire on the on the marquee. <laughs> I, I never put anything like I ever put anything in one of my contracts. Or... No, I guess I, I didn't. Um, I may have done something for the benefit of somebody else, however, but I don't remember if I did have it in the contract. You know, Alex, your, your mic sounds kind of muddy today. Is it muddy now? It's worse. Is it muddy now? How's that? It's a little better. better it, it, I, there's no reason why it should be muddy. It's not sounding muddy in my earphones. Is it just me that's hearing it that way? It does no, sound I hear it too. I hear it okay. too. It's muddy. Yeah, like like muffled. How's this? Uh, that sounds good. Is that Here's a sound check, Mr. Bennett? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that much better? Yes. Oh, okay. It's a little better. Yeah. I, Congratulations, Alex, on that nomination. That's yeah. awesome. Is that oh, great? Yeah. I, for people who are, who don't know yet, uh, I got nominated for uh, the uh, Radio Hall of Fame uh so you know and I'm who are those who died in I didn't. washington well, or philadelphia I still, I, still, I still have to win it okay 
Uh, I'm up against uh, who I am. All right. Oh, Jesse Raphael. I almost, I almost forgot. Uh, well, I am up against uh, uh, Sally Jesse, Jesse Raphael. Raphael. Yeah. And um, who else? Let me see. The conservative yeah. right wing. Who are the two guys in Philadelphia? No idea who they are. I Larry have, and Curly. I never heard <laughs> them either. Okay, here, here are the, uh, here are the, the nominees. Uh, me, Larry Elder, uh, right wing black talk show host who even black people hate. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right, Charlie? Yep. Yeah. You got that right. Uh, and 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 whenever he works for Salem Broadcasting, very right wing organization. Uh, that uh, that uh, actually a lot of their stations are just religious stations, but they do have some talk stations too. Uh, so I I don't know if he's got uh, if he's got a chance because people don't really like him, you know. Uh, and uh, more than that, I mean I, we're talking about there are twenty five votes. Only one vote is the audience vote. Okay, the other 24 is the nominating committee, which has already nominated us. So I had some kind of opinion. Uh, and I've been told that they were all fairly favorable to my nomination without, without much exception. So who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, Preston Elliott and Steve Morrison, I never heard of them. Never heard now, of them. Now, you know, I never I'm, heard of them. I've been in this business a long time. I'm aware of the business around me. Uh, I've never heard of these guys. And, uh, and my, wife, my wife is from Philadelphia and listened to WMMR. And she's never heard of them. And so your career has to you know, overshadow that. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that they're a problem, except that they can get their audience to vote. And they've got a larger megaphone than I do. Okay. Or are they still on the radio, though? They could be uh, the 50s. You know, that's a good question. Well, it, it didn't yes, live. Yes, they are. Weekdays, 5.30 to 10.30. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, anyway, they're still on. So they could, you know, tell everybody, hey, vote for me and maybe get 20,000. Alex, you're nominated, and that's wonderful. So, you know, anything uh, else, just icing on the cake. Uh, and uh, Sally Jesse Raphael which if I were to vote for anybody on this list, I'd vote for her. Only because I knew Sally years ago. We worked together at WMCA. I liked her, she was a nice lady. And she also gave me the most memorable line I've ever gotten from another broadcaster. She came in one day and I said, how are things going? And she looked at me, this was off the air. I was during a commercial break and she was getting ready to come on after me. I said, how you doing? And she said, not too good. I know who I had to fuck to get into this business. Who do I fuck to get out of? <laughs> <laughs> I always, every time I interviewed Sally, I reminded her saying, I had to, oh, I since it. it was always on the air, I had to kind of be careful That's about the great. way I put it. That's, and she said, great. yeah, I probably said that. You know, so, so Alex, were you the were you the answer to her query? <laughs> <laughs> no, we never had we never had that kind of relationship. Um, but well, he was on the same station as I was. Came on after I was on, and uh, we knew each other. You know, we were friends. And uh, so, if I had to vote for somebody other than vote for myself, I would vote for Sally Jesse Raphael. Hmm. And I think that of all the people there. Uh, excluding me, she has been in the business the longest. She's not in it now, but she was in it for the longest period of time. Had a lot of impact, both with the TV show. But we, I remember her. This yeah. is for radio, however, and she was on radio. She didn't influence radio as much as I did. Okay, I my influence, her on TV. my yeah. influence on the on the industry was far greater than hers. Her popularity, her notori notoriety was larger because of the TV show. A lot of people, when I tell them, oh, yeah, she was on radio, they did radio with her, didn't know she was on radio. Yeah, I didn't know. So, you know, I mean, I Alex, would say. Was she a trendsetter or a ground? Was she a groundbreaker when it came to women in radio? No. No. Okay. No, because I mean, I was working at the same station with Dr. Joyce Brothers. 
All right, and there was Sally. So there were two women on that station alone. Uh, there were there were a lot of uh, Rick, Rick. You you know New York radio. There were a lot of other female talk show hosts, weren't there? Yeah, there was um, Rose Franzblau, um, Arlene Francis, people like that. Yeah, you also go back to who who are those people in the uh -huh. morning on the. Uh -huh. Ed and Peggy and Fitzgerald. Yeah, Eggie and Peggy and Fitzgerald, who Woody Allen kind of portrayed in radio days. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. And they would do their show from their home, right? right. And also Dorothy and Dick, Dorothy Kilgallen and yeah. Dick Colmer. So there were there were a lot of people in radio. Uh, she mm -hmm. wasn't like she didn't she didn't break down any doors. Okay, let me put it that way. You know, but uh you know, it's it's kind of interesting. I mean, uh, I, I, the, the company I'm in there, I mean, I would say that if everybody who was on the nominating committee knew about the history of broadcasting nationally and knew about my history would probably <clears throat> vote for me because, you know, it has to do a lot with who influenced the business, who was groundbreaking, uh, who not, you know, changed things, radio changed a little bit because I pushed it in that direction. Uh, I Can you expect these people to know that? Well, this, <laughs> this is the nominating committee. They're broadcasting. Well, they would know that. Yeah, they would know it. They knew Like it. the Golden Globe well, uh, voters. They knew, it well enough to, <laughs> they knew it well enough to nominate me. To have right. Okay, vote. but they also nominated those two guys in Philadelphia. Nobody on this panel has ever heard of. Well, maybe they were running out of people and they said, how about these guys? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I never heard of them. You never heard of them. You know, uh, uh, Larry Elder. Anybody here heard of Larry Elder? Uh, I know the name. I never heard him. Yeah. Heard name, yeah. He's a, he's a right wing talk show host. Oh, what we need another right wing talk. What a groundbreaker. You know, at this I've, point, I've Curtis Lewa yeah. probably could have gotten nominated. Well, you know, I was looking at the uh, San Francisco Bay Area Hall of Fame. Because they've been of which a, you remember. There, yeah, there have been a lot of the Hall of Fame inductions since 2008 when I was inducted. And I look, and they're starting to run out of people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they're getting run to a janitor at KFRC, you know, I mean. <laughs> um, so when it comes to radio, since radio is kind of dying, the big question would be. Who's left? Who's left? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> nobody there was was nominated for doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, they were all there for radio, but radio is kind of dying. And, uh, you know, was it going to be Do those hard? people have to be alive? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so there's hope for you yet, Alex. <laughs> well, they don't, I, well, I don't think, I think, yeah, I think they do have to be alive. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, and do you have to be willing to go to Chicago to pick it up to get the award? <laughs> so they, they, the other, yes, Chicago is where they're holding it. Yeah. Well, I would go, yeah. But anyway, the other categories are longstanding local, regional, 20 years or more, okay? Uh, That's local. Uh, yeah. Active local or regional for 10 years or more, longstanding network syndication. Okay. Uh, one you know, Dan Patrick, who was a sports guy, I guess, was nominated for that. Music format on air personality. And then it gets the spoken word on air personality. Uh, and uh, only two of the out of the four are actually doing broadcasting right now. So, hmm. Who knows? You know. As I said before, be grateful. It's a beautiful honor that you were nominated. Well, I, you know, I don't want to be one of those guys who says it's an honor to be nominated. <laughs> but I will say it is an honor to be nominated. But it would be really an honor, an honor if I won. Yeah. But I, but I, I tell you what, I don't like about it. I don't like it being a contest. I've never liked contests where the arts are concerned. You know, I mean, best movie of the year. How do you how do you come up with that? You know what's your what's your reasoning? For that? Best movie of the year, uh, best movie of what? You know, so I mean it, it it's uh, all these all, all these things they turn into a contest. It'd be nice if they did the 
Hall of Fame, and they got together and they said, oh, this year we've decided the inductees are going to be, <coughs> and then just mm -hmm. do it, rather than have, mm -hmm. you know, a contest. But it is. So. And then the other categories, I have something like 100 uh, broadcast professionals are all asked to vote on the other ones. So, I don't know. You know, but it'd be nice. It'd be nice. I mean, I would love it. It's not going to get me any work. That's for <laughs> damn sure. You know. When will you find out? When is the voting? I the uh, vote. The voting uh, starts uh, like at the end of July, and then extends into like about August twelfth. It's only a couple I, of week window. I got to get my vote in for Sally Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When's the award ceremony? It's a couple of week window, and then the uh, announcement. I think is at the end of. Um, of uh, I think it is at the end of, uh, of maybe August or something like that. Cool. And then, uh, I guess the inductees will all meet in Chicago at a ceremony. It doesn't say when it is. So anyway. Well, if you don't win, it's clearly a rigged vote, and we should all march on Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, oh, look who's here! I, I want to bring Trucker Steve in. It's Trucker Steve oh. he calls our night program a lot, but uh, he's probably calling from home. <laughs> How you doing, Trucker Steve? Trucker Steve uh, had, had had some kidney problems, and. Uh, uh, true to Canadian medicine, you know, they always say about Canadian medicine, you don't want to get sick in Canada because you'll wait forever for a kidney or whatever, you'll wait forever for an operation. Uh, what day did you go into the hospital in Canada's trucker, Steve? What was, what day? Uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, did you, have, uh, you, were you operated on? Uh, just to, to remove the, the thing I had sticking out of my neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right here now. What about, what about your kidneys? They're still in there, but they're not working. Uh, they're still in there. But I am actually pee peeing a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. Yeah. I got more energy. Mm -hmm. and, but, um, but, what, but they, in, in a matter of, of 24 hours, they had you in an ambulance to another hospital. I mean, they really took care of the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they were really good. Healthcare system. What? Yeah, they were really good. Yeah. So now what, it, what, what, what's happening? You have to go in for, um, uh, dialysis. Three times a week. Yeah. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yeah. Wow. I just did one today, um, uh, for three, almost four hours. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what do you do for the four hours? You read, watch television, read magazines. Yeah. They got a TV hanging right above the seat. Oh, really? Right above the chair, oh, so you can have your own shows on. Yeah. It's great. Uh, if you ever get a chance, there's a show on American television called Be Positive about a guy who's in dialysis. That's the, that's the plot line. And every episode, what starts out, Rick, with, with uh, Shecky, with, uh, with this guy in dialysis with all his friends. Yeah. 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 And they be, all become friends and stuff. And it's a funny, it's a fun show. I mean, uh, and you might find it amusing only because of the situation you're in now. So what's going to happen? What's the prognosis? You need to get a new kidney, right? Yeah, but we're starting to get the ball rolling on that. Yeah. I'm going to see my mom and dad tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Give them the information that they need to call a number to uh, get the get this started. Okay. Good. So Good. Uh, they, they got to go through a whole bunch of tests. As as same with me to make sure that we're a hundred percent match. But being that she's my mom. I don't think it'll be an issue. It probably won't be. But no. uh, how old are they? She's 74. Mm -hmm. My dad is in her, is just turned 80. Yeah. So is but it, he's is also a diabetic. Okay? Is it okay? He's a diabetic, so yeah. that he's out. He's so out. you're just talking about your mom. Yeah. yeah what, kind just, of a, wait a minute, what kind of a Canadian are you? You just said he's out rather than oof. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, it, it, but your mother, age doesn't really matter as long as they don't have any kind of conditions like being diagnosed no. and so on. No, it shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue, hopefully. Yeah. And she's ready to give you the kidney, right? Yep. Yep. She's ready to, she's ready to give it. I mean. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah. 
Thank yeah, you. you know, I want to say, say thank you to everybody for their uh, support and well, best wishes. You know, I mean, we, thank you. We, we, and best to you. We like you and we're worried about you that your condition, you know, you almost died, you said, you know, so. Yeah, I could have. Yeah. Yeah. And if I if I let it go, then yeah, it possibly I could have been in the truck and just drove right off the road dead. Wow. Hey, you know something? Uh, it, it just shows you what a crappy system they've got in Canada for health, huh, guys? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that really sucks. Yeah, thank God, I, thank God, I wasn't in the states when this happened. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. If you're getting over bill, what? Well, you, he, Charlie, he might have gotten the proper yeah. treatment here in the United States, but when he walked out the door, he would get a bill for like two hundred thousand dollars. You know, I mean, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. I'm glad you're, you're feeling yeah. better. I'm glad you could call us, you know. But uh, now where, where, is your, where is your USB port now? <laughs> that <would be laughs> the place where they do the dialysis from. Is it in your side or? Oh, uh, it's right here. Yeah. Right here. There's a couple of hoses that come out yeah. in my chest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I just hook up a couple of lines and then there you go. Yeah. And you know what? From just the start of this in one week, I've already lost nearly 30 pounds. Wow. 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 I was I was 95 195 pounds when this started. Wow. I'm now 167. Where, wow. did, where did where did all that go? Was it water weight? It, it just sucks out fluid. Yeah. I was just full of uh I guess I was retaining water. It sounds <laughs> like it. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, yeah, yeah. And, and you couldn't. Yeah. And you had a hard time peeing, right? Uh, for a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you're feeling really. You're feeling good for the first time. In what long? Yeah, I, know. I haven't been 167 in fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea why. Uh, you know. Um, how you could keep driving a truck and still have this going on in your body. I guess you didn't, yeah. didn't think there was anything going on. Well, uh, I knew I was feeling like shit. Well, I was trying to put it off. I was just trying to suck it up and just, I was scared about losing my job, losing my house. Yeah. You know, going into a mountain of debt. And I don't believe you're calling us from Canada. Cause you would have said who's. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, who else is here from Canada? Uh, um, uh, Mike, what? Mike, does he yes, sound sir. Canadian to you? <laughs> uh, well, Canadian is a, Canada is a big country. So like the East Coast, like there's a lot of New England bleed in the East Coast. And I think that's where the Aboot and Hoose and all that stuff comes from. Oh, it's okay. kind of New England a little bit. And then there's also French Canadian. Out West, we sound more Californian than anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you should with the weather. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we've also got a little bit of that uh, almost Texan Matthew McConaughey relaxation because we're full of BC bud back here. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you're where in Canada, Mike? I'm on the West Coast. I'm like, I'm like five hours north of Seattle, three hours east of Vancouver. And you're where, Trucker Steve? It's a place called Kelowna. It's like uh, the the Tuscany or Napa Valley of Canada. Uh, London, Ontario. London, Ontario. Okay. So you're over That's on the east. Halfway between Toronto and Detroit. Right oh. across the lake from me. Yeah. 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 Which well, is we're... technically the center of Canada. Yeah. We're yeah. all pulling for you, Trucker Steve. So we, we, we can you. No, we, we can pick up London, London radio stations here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And Mandy, we hope you pull through too. Oh, wait a minute. You're not sick. <laughs> <laughs> you live in uh cleveland andrew yeah yep okay yeah um well right now i'm in the white house i they finished i see that i was yeah. wondering i was gonna ask you andrew when are you giving your speech well what happened the cyber ninjas finished the recount and i paid them twenty dollars <laughs> and instead of filling in all with those black pens they wrote my name in on all the ballots so. okay hmm. I, but you're uh, only there until August, right? So when, when, when the pillow, when the well, when the pillow guy, you know, has been talking, reality is he was talking about me being reinstated. I see. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah. Hmm. My, my, my first, uh, my first rule as the emperor of America will be to, you know, make the elections fair because, you know, mm. it's just full of corruption. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> just yeah. horrible. Yeah. Of course, yeah. did you? It was better than Charlie, who lives in a state that's trying to deprive him of every ability to go to a voting booth. And all the Democrats that work in the state house are leaving the state. They're leaving the state. Well, they did that one state, so they don't have to vote. They did that one before. Right before them. They did that before, didn't they, Charlie? When when was it? They didn't actually leave the state. No, no, they did. Was it 10, 12 years ago they left the state? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a really cool executive order that Biden's putting through that will basically end the non-compete for employees so that employees can compete also. You know, you leave a company and then you're not allowed to work in your industry for years because you were dumb enough to sign a non-compete yeah. or forced into it. They're, they're going to be doing away with them, it looks like. Good. Which is huge. Yeah. Well, I've, at my time, I, I had, I think, a couple of non-competes, you know, but I never signed them. I said, no, that will not go in my contract. And they you signed won't. the age one when you left Sirius. Well, when I left Sirius, here's what they did. They, you know, I had to get, what was that? What's that money you get? Severance. You, Severance. 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 And they were going to pay me something like, I don't know, 16000 $20,000 in severance or something like that. And they said, here, before we give you the severance, you got to sign this. Yep. And it was a piece of paper that said, I would not charge them. Would they would not sue them? them. Oh. Not sue them. For or charge age. Them. For it age. For, uh, for age discrimination. And I said, what happens if I don't sign this? They said, then you don't get the severance. Yep. Yep. And, I left. And I said, I said, oh, so you're asking me to sign uh, something that says I won't sue you for age discrimination. Are you asking the same thing out of Albert? Because they were also firing at the same time. No. And I said, well, then this is age discrimination. <laughs> yeah. You should ask him to sign exactly the same thing. But you didn't. You're worried about me suing you for age discrimination. He said, well, you don't have to sign it. It's not giving you the money. So I signed it knowing full well that I could probably go into any court of law. Yes. and argue that I did this under duress. Yeah, you, you can't sign away your rights. So yeah, that's right. That's and right. I was, uh, by their rules and regulations, I was owed that money. Yeah. You know, but yet they wouldn't give it to me unless I signed an, uh, that, that clause. Well, the way, the way non-competes work to hold up, there are certain restrictions to it. But one of the places that I left said that they have the right of refusal. So if they were to fire you, and you would have a two-year non-compete, so you couldn't work in that industry. But to get out of the legal, the legalities of it, they included a clause that said, if you had an offer with a competitor, they would have the right to refusal of the offer. And if they don't want you to take that job, they would have to pay you 60% of what your salary was through the duration of the non-compete. Mm -hmm. But there's another aspect of it called business interference. So if a competitor knowing you had a non-compete made you an offer, they would be sued for business interference. It's called, so it's called, so you could never, it's called, yeah. it's called tortious interference. It's called penis in the asses. <laughs> tortious interference is when they, uh, somebody wants to hire you. Mm -hmm. So you leave this place to go with them. If it can be shown that they did anything to ruin the relationship between you and your former employer, yep. uh, uh, that's tortious interference. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But so if you're the employee, no one will write you an offer to be able to get that 60% they promised, which is the only reason that the non-compete would, would hold up. Yeah. But you were stuck, stuck between two conflicting. And of course, an attorney to fight, it's probably 25, 30 grand, which you just lost your job. So how are you going to afford that? Yeah, sure what, I, what I heard was like, <clears throat> since, uh, uh, at uh, Live 105 in San Francisco, uh, I had a contract that still had about a year left to run and they had to keep paying me even though I didn't come into work. People went, gee, that's wonderful. You're making that kind of money not to go into work. I said, think of how insulting that is. They're willing to pay yeah. $250,000 for that year. So I won't come in. 
you know. <laughs> and they as just, your career gets stale, and then at the end, you can't find a job. And right. I could, well, wait a minute. I could, during that time, I found out legally from my lawyers, I could go take another job, but they would only have to pay the difference between what I was making at that job mm -hmm. and the money I would have made from them. So it would, it have, would it have to have been out of San Francisco? So in another no, market? It, it could have been in San Francisco. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. But uh, but then again, they could have they could have claimed, well, we don't mind paying him. We're going to keep paying him. He can't work, you know, things like that. Huh. But it, it's and the and the new the new layer, Alex, mm -hmm. is now the IP. So you sign that you're not going to disclose intellectual property, and corporations have now defined customer lists as intellectual property, even if they're public. Wow. So so you leave a company, and and now you can't. So it's a non-solicit, non-disparage, and uh, no disclosure of IP. So yeah. even if you get out of your non-compete, you go work for a competitor, you can't talk to customers that are on their, on their list. <laughs> if you want to talk, if you want to talk about the intellectual property, Shecky's the guy we got to talk to here. Yep. <laughs> because you work in a situation of real intellectual property questioning, right? Over when Letterman left NBC and went to CBS. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I wasn't personally, you know, Dave was. Yeah, but you know, we knew what was going on, you know. Well, yeah. NBC claimed they only named Bure Mail. They own Stupid Petrix, whatever, you know. Yeah. Larry, how, Larry did, how, did, how did Dave get around that? I mean, because eventually he did do Stupid Petrix on the new show. And, uh, you know, there were a couple of other things that. Uh, well, we called the mailbag CBS mailbag. Okay, so he called. It didn't call it letters, but what yeah. about pe stupid Petrix? How did you get around that? I really can't tell you. Yeah, they just we decided. Just did it. I think what That's they okay. did, you can tell must us. have decided to do. This is what yeah. I would have decided to do. Let's do it, and if they sue us, we'll stop. Mm. You know, and they probably just decided not to sue. I mean, after a while, didn't NBC get a little tired of trying to protect everything that was intellectual property on the old show? <laughs> They didn't care, but by then we had renamed everything, so we didn't care. You, you know what I was amazed? How close the new theme song was to the old theme song. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a different theme Yeah, but song. Paul owned that. Paul wrote that, so NBC didn't own that theme song. Oh, really? Oh, okay. But he did. Why would they own it? Well, that could be considered part of the intellectual property. I disagree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That would mean a Beatles song is intellectual property if it aired on some no, TV no, no, show. No, 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 no. But when this a theme song for a show is kind of part of the show. Well, wouldn't that be owned by Dave's production company, I would think? Well, no, he, we were, when we started the show at NBC, NBC and Carson owned the show. Mm. But I don't think something that belongs, an ASCAP song that Paul Schaefer wrote can be considered intellectual property of NBC unless Paul sold the rights to NBC. Okay. All right. But uh, uh, the other thing was uh, in the old show, which was owned the first half hour, I think, was owned by Carson, right? Well, it, basically, it kind yeah. of a weird thing Carson had in his contract that any show that went on after him, he had to own the first uh, half hour. Or had a piece of the action. Let's call it that. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you go on to uh, uh, YouTube, yeah, iTunes, is it? Yeah. Well, it's it. It's all over the place. You can uh, find a show called the Carson Podcast, and Shecky is the guest on Carson Podcast this week. So oh, cool. It was really good too. It was a really good interview. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I love. I don't know what when, the hell uh... I said, but thank you. <laughs> Um, I love and I've already I was fascinated at the paid end paid when you too. talked about Carson staying too late, staying too long. A oh, little bit. I was I was couching that. Believe me, if I was really going to say what I wanted to say, but then that <laughs> well, was my was, opinion. It was super respectful, though. Like it was there was reverence that was there, which your guys' show has always done. And oh, anybody we just thought the show was done. Carson show was crap by the end right, in the yeah. late 80s. Yeah, but I'm not going to say that. Because again, you Carson, know, um, you know something. I bet Carson knew it. 
You know, you, can, you can't be a performer and know that your show isn't crap. Like I realize my shows now are crap. <laughs> the honest way, I mean, you know, but- You know, I, and again, I always bring up Dave or Carson or any of these people are talking to these 22 year old twits they've never heard of. Right. Yeah, right. You know, I read something today, maybe it was page six, as I always like to bring up. Some woman stole the red carpet at Con. Never heard of this woman. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But her PR yeah. agent got it onto the into the newspaper. A lot of these celebrities seem very generic to me. You know, the you see them, you know the face, maybe you know the name, but you I can't put them together. <laughs> it's like I don't know which one that is. You know, or Person X is dating person Y, and I have no idea who X and Y even are. Yeah. By the way, Mandy, did you just put on your purse? Did you're so observant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad again. Um, I am um, going to my boss's retirement party. Oh, oh mm. really? And yeah, she's she's retiring Thursday and moving to Puerto Rico. Oh wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, hashtag goals. Yeah. <laughs> so then, I wish I was retiring Thursday and moving to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Well, does that mean yeah. that you can now uh, uh, participate with us every week because you don't have a ball? probably, <laughs> probably because now my next door neighbor is my friend. She got moved over from another office and got a promotion. Mm -hmm. The other lady that used to complain about me, she's moved over there. So now Chris is next door. So. Oh, good. She's not going to care. Yeah, yeah. I even already told her. She's like, that's fine. Yeah, we love your presence. So, so if you hear me like guffawing and laughing very loudly on, loudly on Mondays at four o'clock. Think about about why I like your presence here outside the fact that you're gorgeous and witty and whatever. <laughs> Forget about all of that. Your background makes me want to move to Georgia. Oh, I, <laughs> it's, well, it's been raining and storming here today. I, I'm what probably going to be late to this thing because traffic's probably going to suck. But yeah. Well, if you have to leave early, you know, we can just stay. No, I was just going to walk out with my, you know, now we're just going to get in the car. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I'm well, mobile. We'll go so. with you to the party and wish you goodbye to Puerto Rico. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's just like at a taco place. So, what if everybody had a, had a go. Georgia walking out of her office, probably going to yeah. get into her car. And I drive. quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing yeah, i've missed the last couple of weeks because it work's been crazy so i've wanted to definitely get on today yeah but, i'll mute it since i'll be outside so yeah. i'll be right back okay all right she's going outside oh, but anyway. you know back you know 30 years ago everybody's like oh it's going to be so great when we have video conferencing and now look at this here's someone getting in her car I mean, we, I don't think we ever even thought about that. We probably thought about it being plugged into the wall and you might sit there and, you know, whatever. But here, well, we, you we, know. Kind of, we kind of referred to it as uh, 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 what, what, uh, something like video calls. That's what yeah. We, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's what they had at the 64 World's Fair. Uh, yeah. And I was yeah. there. I was telling somebody that the other day. I was four years old and I went to that. And I absolutely remember that. The Bell Telephone. <laughs> and they yep. were the telephoning somebody that was like 40 feet away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you were talking to somebody in a pod, you know, well, yeah, just 30 or 40 feet away. I absolutely remember that. It's one of my earliest memories. What the happened? First time, was, I saw, first time I saw a video call was in 2001, A Space Odyssey, right? It seems so yeah. futuristic mm. when he was calling his daughter. So it, 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 the thing is, the things creeped up on. I mean, you know, first, all these things became necessary out of the technology. Nobody at Apple said, oh, we're going to put a camera in here and people can call each other. They didn't talk, think about it as video calls. They right. assumed that if they had a camera in there and it was an iPhone, that you could link the two together and you could talk to each other and see each other. And one thing led to another. And now we got Zoom and this is just easy peasy stuff to do. You know, nobody really has to work that hard at getting it done. So, I was a kid. Dick Tracy had a uh, watch. <laughs> hey, two way wrist TV, two way wrist radio. Yeah, I remember that. I no, it was two way wrist TV. Yeah. Well, first it was a radio, then it became TV. We still yeah. don't have wrist TV because this phone, they've yet to put a camera in. Oh, they will. <laughs> I, I don't know if yeah. they will. I think they kind of think your phone is better. Uh, at that 
than just a little, you know, a little thing. But who knows? Right? You know. Hang on, my shoe is ringing. Just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> my my well, first well, video. Here's Mandy, and she's driving down the road. You know? But do you guys have? Am I the only one in this group that has an Apple Watch, or does anybody else have one? I have the Apple Watch. Yeah, I mean, I even got the cell service on it, so I can. I don't have to take my phone with me, like if I go to walk or something in a park. Yeah. I just put my AirPods in and have my watch, and I can like talk on the phone. Well, this is cellular. Uh, this is cellular too, but I don't use it that often. I still, when I leave, I still take my uh, my phone with me uh, to measure my walk. I can measure my walk on here, but I can do it better if I've also got the phone in my back pocket. You know. Um, do walkie anyway, talkie talk talk still exist? Do walkie <laughs> do. Yeah. They did on the on the iPhone watch. Yeah. And the iPhone, I think they had a yeah. There's a walkie-talkie feature on the Apple. They call walkie-talkie, but I disabled it because it never works. Because the people no. I call are never there. No, you have to. It's almost like you have to be in the same room or like the same house. You know, you yeah. have to be just family members. Or well, something. it was kind of the, the idea behind it was is that it was like old push to talk. You know, you push it, right. you talk. Push it, you talk. And we didn't need that because you got a phone right there. You, you got the phone in your hand. You can simply yeah. call somebody and talk. The first first time I was on a video call was sitting in an office in Columbia, 1992. Uh -huh. it was a company had direct wire video conferencing. And that's if I wanted to be at the staff meeting, I had to be on the. So yeah. when you know, you learn the old 90s yeah. movies, they wheel the guy in on the cart with the big tube television and the VCR. <laughs> I'm gonna that, was, that was me. I'm going to tell you about me as a kid, okay? I got a Space Cadet walkie-talkie belt. What? Yeah. It was a belt. You could put it on there, and it had this big thing, okay? And then you could talk to somebody else who was wearing the other belt about 50 feet away from you. The reason it had to be 50 feet is that it had a wire that went between your belt oh. and their belt. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm sitting there trying to do this with my friends and getting tangled up in the wire. I mean, it was just the worst. It was just a sophisticated, it was just a sophisticated soup can with a string, right? Yes. Yeah. Marjorie, you're trying to say something, but your mic is off. What, what were you trying to say? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> now she goes back to talking yourself. Why is that kid over there in the park talking to his dick? What's going on? What, what's that? <laughs> this is uh, Richard, by the way. But that, oh, sorry. that was early technology for me, you know. <laughs> really I used to have the the Apple stuff, and it was used for engineering at the beginning. Yeah. And there was a software that worked pretty good. And all of a sudden, they decided to take it off the market. Huh. I guess they were having some problems or they didn't think it was the right thing financially for them. But they brought it out. Now, of course, they put it could back. Have been, it could have been it happened during the period when Jobs left Apple. Mm. And they it did it and like uh, the, uh, what was that? What, the, the, uh, uh, the Watson. Uh, Watson. No, not Watson. Newton. That was IBM. I, that's IBM. I'm thinking about the Newton. Newton. Newton, Newton, you're right. Uh, yeah. and, and the Newton, they were on the right track. They just didn't have it right. Whereas yeah. if Jobs had been in power, he would have gotten it right. And what he, was the Newton? The Newton was like what later became an iPhone. Oh. You know, I mean. It was like a Palm Pilot. It was a, like a Palm yeah. Pilot. And you supposedly it had a, um, recognition. Uh, what do you call it? Writing recognition. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Jobs, 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 Jobs was alive text. when the phone came out. But he wasn't at Apple. That, no, he was, he, the iPhone was, was Jobs. But prior yeah. to that, Newton was out. And Newton was supposed to, it was supposed to do a lot of that stuff, you know, and it didn't. Uh, and it was horrible. And I, I remember once Apple sent me a Newton because I was doing the show called Log On TV. And mm. he sent me a Newton to see what I thought of it. And mm. I just, I told him, it, it's, it, it, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> you know, it doesn't do, so far as handwriting recognition, yeah. it, well, you got to do that over and over again until it gets used to you. I said, I don't have the time. Yeah. Okay. Little did we know the day would come where now you can just talk into your, into your, the text into your phone 
and it'll be pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. Unless you're starving or something. (laughs) How you doing, Scott? Doing great. Out there in Plano, Texas? Fantastic. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The weather been good? Maybe once. Not so bad. Maybe once. And Vernon? You're uh, you're down there in uh, in Kentucky. Yeah, I'm in a different room tonight, so the Wi-Fi is working better. Yeah. yeah. How's it, how's, it, how's everything in Kentucky? You know, I worry about you because of the politics down there. Are they? Well, they, I live in, I live in one of the Democratic uh, strongholds of Jefferson County, Kentucky, and the only congressman that we have from Kentucky who is a Democrat is John Yarmouth, and he's in charge of the Budget Committee now, so that the Democrats are in charge. But you still have two senators that, you know, really don't care about the people of Kentucky. Rand Paul, for sure. who's Mitch it? McConnell, for sure. Mitch McConnell and Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul. They are wow. the two starriest. They are the two most hate. Well, I, I take that back. Ted Cruz and John behind Clark. Ted Cruz. Yeah, behind Ted Cruz, Mitch McConnell is the most hated senator there is. Yeah, and and Mitch McConnell is just he's a shit. He, I wish he'd smile. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm to be just, by the way, I don't want to bring him up. Did anybody hear Trump's speech yesterday to CPAC? No. It's a, I, I can't believe it. You know, he got up and he went, I got more votes than any other pre- previous presidential candidate. I got, it is I got, I, you know, I got 75 million votes, largest in history. He didn't say, though, with the exception of Joe Biden, who got a <laughs> million more. He didn't mention that part. Mm. It was just, I watched it for about 10 minutes. I couldn't take it. it uh, seven million more. Joe Biden got seven million more than he did. Yeah. Seven yeah. million? Okay. Is seven that, million, yeah. But, you know, well, I well, got Trump thought it was a rigged election. more than any other presidential candidate in history. But he's he's going to run again. It's kind of like the inauguration. He had the <laughs> largest crowd in the yeah. country. Right? <laughs> yeah. and listen, I want to ask you. even watch it for 10 minutes, Alex. I mean, the guy's Looney Tune. Like, yeah. I just can't believe anybody's <laughs> watching him. Like, it's amazing people still think he's that and all that back Yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand it either. I mean, uh, how, what kind of more? And secondly, at CPAC, they made the vaccination a political issue yes they brought up something about so many people haven't gotten the shot yet and all the republicans there see that right. are applauding what are you doing applauding for your death what is this i am yeah, yeah. i mean it's amazing just yeah. amazing. it's it's like a suicide cult now it's like what I wanted, what yeah I did is, yeah uh, listen, I don't care anymore because they're just going to be less Republicans, okay? <laughs> That's the bottom line. They're going to kill each other off by not getting their vaccination. And li- listening to Tucker Carlson give speeches about how it's a fraudulent uh, thing, the, the, uh, the vaccination. Hey, hey, they'll That's need it. your attention. Uh, what? <laughs> Interesting thing I just got. Oh, I see. Somebody said- needs- or something. Hey, let me ask you a question. Sure. Uh, did anybody watch uh, the uh, the uh, uh, space flight this week? Yeah. Yes, of course. Virgin Galactic. Mm-hmm. I was amazed at how unknowledgeable the network news people are mm. about space. To begin with, they said this was a uh, he was going up in a rocket. <laughs> no, he didn't go up in a rocket. He went up in a plane attached to a plane. Yeah. Then released at a certain height, getting the assist in height from that plane to go higher in the stratosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they were weightless for about four minutes, and then they came right back down again. Landed in a. It wasn't a rocket. It wasn't space travel. It was suborbital. It's like, uh, what's his name? Alan Shepard. Alan Shepard. Right. Is the first guy ever to do space flight? Fifteen but minute flight. Fifteen <laughs> minute flight, suborbital. That don't count. Uh, SpaceX is sending people up all the time into space. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they're, they're not even they're not even agreeing that he went into space. The uh, the 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 culture says it's about sixty two miles high, and I think he went forty five miles. So not quite there. It wasn't even <laughs> really in space. Not really. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he was weightless. <laughs> he was weightless. Well, he's only weightless because he was the plane was dropping out from underneath yeah. him, so you become weightless, just like those. Uh, it's like a parabolic. Yeah, I know exactly how they train people to be. In yeah. Space. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it was kind of. A, Can you remember the name of the German guy that came to the United States and really did a lot of the. Original. Well, that was that was Willie. That was uh, what, what's his name? Werner von Braun. Werner von Braun. Yeah. So the my Nazi. Cousin, my kid. Yeah. yeah but my cousin worked for him. It's kind oh, of, Jesus. I, 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 a Nazi. You know? I know where they go up. I don't care where they come down. So <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, here we actually hired a Nazi. Yeah, well, there was like a I was the right guy. The Russians got these Nazis, and we got these Nazis. <laughs> they, Nazis they, actually got, Nazis. they actually got the best Nazis. Yeah, that's why they had a better space program for years. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah they were all they were all Nazis, and uh, um, then. Um, but the thing is, uh, I want to know now. The next guy going up into space in his own rocket. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Bezos. Sounds like something I would have done as a kid. I want to build my own rocket and go. And do it. <laughs> uh, is Jeff Bezos? How many here, because you've had dealings in your lifetime with Amazon, hopes the fucking thing crashes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's not in charge of Amazon not, anymore. No, he just. We don't down. care. He sets the, the move. He <laughs> sets the, the board. <laughs> he just takes the money. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I didn't I uh, the other day I had a case of uh, soda that I ordered from Amazon right it doesn't get they say it's been delivered but it's nowhere to be found I went to all the other buildings could not find it to save my life I call them I say send me a new one they say we can't do it for 24 hours because it may be reported as uh, uh, as arrived but you know and I said I have to do that all the time. I said, mm -hmm. okay, I'll wait till tomorrow. So I've called the next day. Okay. Now I'm going through this two times already. I've, I've had to do this eight times because in the last two months, there have been eight non delivery. Huh. So they, they go, okay, well, you didn't get it. We'll send you a new one. Okay. Thank you very much. I get the next one the next day. Right. No problem. Huh. Last night, about seven days later, I walked to my front door and there's the first one. Oh no! <laughs> what was that? I hope that rocket crashes. Okay. <laughs> By the way, Alex, thanks for those sodas. The previous. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but I mean, it, and you know, if that thing crashes, can you think of all the jokes people are going to have about it? Oh, I mean, rather than saying how sorry we are for Jeff Bezos, because quite frankly, richest man in the world, you don't yeah. really care. He's not the richest man. Who is? Putin. Putin. No. What? They oh. don't count Putin. Well, they don't, Putin. they don't have any proof about Putin as well. That's the problem. We don't know how much Putin's got. <laughs> it's a lot. But anyway, Bezos got, you know, so if he crashes, hey, he crashed. He was the richest guy in the world. Yeah, but he's taking like some 80 year old woman. Yeah. Him, you know, he's got some, oh, the poor 80 year old woman. Well, also, they're taking, he's taking his brother. So the whole family's going to get wiped right. out. Yeah. Right. His brother's not rich. Is, is, well, he will be if the thing crashes. <laughs> like, like the packages <laughs> on my front porch. If he crashes, we'll get it. Well, I'll get emailed a picture of the crash. See, this is what I'm saying. That's the kind <laughs> of joke that if this thing crashed. <laughs> well, we're going to have it. will be fine. They're wrapping it in bubble wrap. <laughs> <laughs> First joke out well, of the she would use his fortune for good. Yeah. Like, like he could probably like eradicate eradicate <laughs> poverty. I don't, I don't know if you've heard, but in company in company policy, Alex, you know, on the on the craft, they've got buckets for, for peeing and <laughs> they're not allowed bathroom breaks during the flight. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> We're starting with the jokes already. You, get a, you, get a you started it. You we're gonna, be way ahead. we're <laughs> gonna have to sell these to, to, to some show. Yeah, this is yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, you got the motor running. It's your fault. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I you said something, Mandy, that I wanna I wanna take you to task for, and that was the old maxim about why are we doing all the space travel when we've got more important things here on Earth? 
And I agree with you where NASA is concerned because NASA is a federal government program, which is uh, 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 in which money is being taken from other things to fund NASA. In the case of the space, this current space program that's going on, all private money. I mean, for the most mm -hmm. part. Yeah. Uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Musk, did win an uh, allocation of money from NASA because he was the first one to meet a certain goal or something. And he got about a billion and a half dollars and that let him launch the whole thing. But it's private industry that's doing this and it's not at the expense of any other public programs and there's nothing these guys could do to end world hunger, you know? Especially, especially uh, uh, Elon Musk, who's probably the the least wealthy of all these people that were involved in this current space race. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I'm all for it. as long as long as it's private money help, you know, uh, and we are going to solve some of the problems on Earth if we get to Mars, like overpopulation, <laughs> you know, and things like that. So, and I wish I could live long enough to be one of those people going to Mars. They say the first trips are going to be a one-way trip because that rocket's going to be used to live in. Uh, I'd go in a second. Anything to get out of New York. <laughs> yeah. uh, it'll be prime delivery. Yeah. Would you go, Marjorie, would you go with me to Mars? Well, if it's set up already, I'll go with you. I asked this question the other night of some friends who were in a Zoom call. I have a new hat here. Does it make me look too black? <laughs> It just doesn't seem to fit me right. You're, you're the blackest man on the planet, Alex. And, <laughs> and I could do the old thing, of, you know, of, of turning it around, but look what happens. <laughs> it says Harlem as well. So. I think that's a good look. I like the hat? I like the, I like the look. I think, I mean, wear it back. <laughs> well, did you wear it backwards? Yeah. I think it's cultural appropriation. You're canceled. Yeah. yeah. Go in the Hall of Fame. That's the picture you should send. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so when you go to the Hall of Fame, do they give you like a plaque with a radio mic? I think they probably give you it. a plaque where they give you a, a little, little statue. Statue or something. And I guess, I don't know, they put your picture up in the Hall of Fame. You know, where is the Hall of Fame? The Hall of Fame is in Chicago. Uh -huh. I think it's in Hello? What, what were you shopping, Mandy? I'm sorry, I should have muted myself. I've got a little road rage issue. A little yeah, road just, rage people, uh, people are just, I hate people. In Go on, yell something out the window. Go ahead. <laughs> people us. run red lights so bad here. Like, they, yeah. you know, 17 cars will go through a red light. Shecky's mm. not driving anymore because he doesn't like the way other people drive, right, Shecky? Yeah, I try not to drive if I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if because, I'm... Because, you know, you're on the highway and you're doing 55, 60, mm -hmm. staying in your lane, and there's some guy doing 85, weaving in and out of traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, don't get me started on the little UFOs on crotch rockets that fly down the highway. Mm -hmm. Want to weave in and out, you know, those motorcycles. Oh, the crotch rockets, yeah. Yeah. We have them in my neighborhood and they make noise like you wouldn't imagine. It's amazing. You, know, you can put mufflers on those things that don't make noise, but they don't like that. No. It, it, it goes off. They, they want the noise. Yeah. Vernon's on a call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, listen, we're getting towards the end of this. Well, I love this. I wish, I wish every show I did was as easy to do as this one. You people are just so wonderful and so warm and so cordial. And uh, uh, Well, then stop doing the show. Go with the assholes at 10 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Charlie. Yeah. Tell us what you really think, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the only thing I'm worried about, we'll just go over here for a little bit. The only thing I'm worried about is that if I were to do away with the nighttime show, they'll come here. The, the, That's the, right. The yeah. Come yeah. Here, along with we don't want that. And so on. So, you know, I might, maybe, I may keep the show on. on Friday and just do it once a week or something and then do this mm. uh, uh, once a week and just maybe a second time during the week but you know it's just all you guys kind of know it's happening and you're ready to go and be there like uh, 
Shecky is, is never would do any other show that I do. Um, <laughs> Eddie's become a regular here. Jeff Stein calls the night show, um, but he is one of the nicer people that I have called me. Uh, Andrew Deutsch, uh, you're wonderful. You know, you're funny. You're really gut level funny. <laughs> Steve Bender, love having you. You're downtown. And, you know, uh, we are going to have dinner. Oh, yeah. Lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can either come up here or we'll go down there. She loves going down to uh, Union Square. You know, we will figure it out soon. And that's where you That's where you live. That's your area. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Charlie Wallace, come on over anytime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we're still here. We talked to our lawyer today. We're going back into court. Well, Alice, uh -oh. bring that up. Come on. What? Don't bring that up. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. Alex, stop it. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying we don't know what's going to happen. Say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> well, then I'm just going to stay here and talk about it. <laughs> Mike, thank you. Marjorie? Huh? Uh, Len LaFrisco, Scott Boddicker, Vernon. He's on the phone. Bye, Vernon. Uh, Trekker Steve, God, good, just good to see you. You're looking healthy, too. You don't look like a guy who, uh, who's sitting there with two bum kidneys, but, you know. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to be fine. I'm sure you're going to be just fine. And, of course, Mandy, Always, you know, you you dress up the show, you know? <laughs> and 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 you're, you're nice, and we all like you. we we all love you. Okay, yeah. I've missed you guys, so I'm glad I was about to get to listen well, to that. Tonight, maybe you'll be able to do it every week because you know what's your really name? hopefully yeah I'm going to Puerto Rico. Anyway, yeah, to give a big wave goodbye, and I'll just turn this whole damn thing off. Okay. There they go, ladies.